Chris, I'll start when you do the gavel. Good evening. This meeting is being held pursuant to Executive Order N2920 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 12, 2020. Any or all mem board members may attend the meeting by phone. Members of the public may attend at the Fairfield Sassoon Central Office 2490 Kilbourne Road, Fairfield, California to observe and provide public comment during the meeting. Board members will state their name when they make the motion and when they make the second. All votes will be recorded via roll call format. If the board president's connection to the meeting fails, board vice president John Silva will run the meeting. May I have the roll call, please? Eric Cortez. Joan Gott. Here. Judy Honeychurch. Here. David Isom. Here. Jonathan Richardson. Here. John Silva. Bethany Smith. Here. Craig Wilson. Here. Was that it? I think yeah. I see John. So John is here now. Yeah, All right. I, I said yeah. Have, okay, sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, we can move on then to approval of the agenda. I'd like a motion to approve the agenda minus 4B, the distance flirting plan, which has been pulled from the agenda. We have a motion. Move approval. John Silva, second. Okay, that was Jonathan Richardson. Move approval. Uh, second. I believe Bethany uh, uh, Smith was the second. And Jonathan Richardson, your microphone is um, really off, so we can't really hear what you say. Okay, roll call uh, for the motion, please. Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Here. Uh, aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Okay, that motion carries. Uh, we will be adjourning to closed session for discussion and possible action on matters of student discipline, personnel negotiations and litigation. Is there any public comment on closed session? There is no public comment. Thank you. We will adjourn to closed session. Okay, so now we click our telephones, right? Yes, we just,
Good evening and welcome to the governing board meeting. This meeting is being held pursuant to executive order N2920 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 12, 2020. Any or all board members may attend the meeting by phone. Members of the public may attend at the Fairfield Sassoon Central Office 2490 Hillborn Road, Fairfield, California to observe and provide public comment during the meeting. Board members will state their name when they make a motion and when they make the second. All votes will be recorded via roll call format. If the board president's connection to the meeting fails, board vice president John Silver will run the meeting. May I please have, uh, would you everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Superintendent Corey, could you please give us a report of closed session? Thank you, President Honeychurch. In the matter of labor negotiations, no action was taken. In the matter of public employment, it is my honor to announce that by unanimous vote, the board has officially appointed Corey Barlogi as the assistant principal for Anna Kyle Elementary School. Corey Barlogi has a passion for serving in a Title I, um, Title I school. Her enthusiasm boiled over when the opportunity presented her to join the Anna Kyle team. Ms. Barlogi brings over 20 years of dedicated classroom experience serving the students of Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District, most recently in the classroom at Sassoon Elementary School and previously at, Anna, at, at Amy Blank. She is an author and an artist in addition to being an educator. Mrs. Barlogi earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from Sonoma State University and went on to earn her multiple subject credential and master's degree from Chapman University. We are so honored and excited to have Ms. Corey Barlogi serve as our assistant principal at Anna Kyle Elementary School beginning July 1st, 2020. And that's where you guys should all unmute and clap, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Also by unanimous vote, our board has officially appointed Beverly Harrison as assistant principal at Nelda Mundy Elementary School. Beverly Harrison brings her administrative skills to Nelda Mundy after serving as assistant principal at Cleo Gordon Elementary and Laurel Creek Elementary. She brings experience in leader and me framework, positive behavior and intervention supports, multi-tier systems of support um, at, to the Nelda Mundy campus. Her background in literacy coaching and coordinator work from previous districts will also be an asset to her new role. She earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Arkansas, Fayetteville, and her Master's of Education with a focus in curriculum instruction from American College in Education. We're so pleased and honored to have Beverly Harrison join the Nelda Mundy team. Congratulations. <laughs> By unanimous vote, our board has officially appointed Sabrina McCarver as the assistant principal at Rodriguez High School. Ms. Sabrina McCarver joins FSUSD from West Contra Costa Unified School District, where she served as assistant principal at John F. Kennedy High School since 2018. Through UC Berkeley's Principal Leadership Institute and her experiences as a Latina bilingual Spanish and English speaker, Ms. McCarver has developed an expertise with equity, trauma-informed practices, social justice, and restorative practices. Her advocacy for historically disenfranchised students, including English language learners and students achieving below grade level, has encouraged her to empower others to develop a community um, to empower young people and reach their college and career readiness goals. Ms. McCarver earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Spanish and Sociology with a minor in nonprofits from the University of Southern California and her Master's of Arts in Education from Stanford University. We are so excited to have Ms. Sabrina McCarver 
join the FSUSD team and the Rodriguez High School staff. Congratulations. Yay! By unanimous vote, our board has officially appointed Mr. Jose Gutierrez as the assistant principal at Fairfield High School. Mr. Gutierrez comes to us from Napa Valley Unified School District where he has served as an assistant principal since 2018. Completing UC Berkeley Principal Institute, Mr. Gutierrez values and implements strategies that emphasize equity, ec educational equity, trauma-informed care in the classroom, and restorative practices. In striving for equitable outcomes for all, Mr. Gutierrez aims to reduce the suspension rates for students, particularly students of color. He also aims to improve learning outcomes for all. One of his greatest strengths is his love for his love and ability to relate to students, remain calm, and think logically under pressure. We, uh, Mr. Gutierrez earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Chicago Study from UC Berkeley and received his master's degree in teaching and learning from Toro University. We are so pleased to have uh, Mr. Gutierrez come back to FSUSD because he attended Sassoon Elementary and Crystal Middle School in our district. We are excited and honored to have him join the Fairfield High School team. Congratulations. Welcome, also by unanimous vote, the board has officially appointed Ms. Katrina Haiti Gustafson. She is joining us as a mental health clinician from Mount Diablo Unified School District where she served as a behavioral tech health specialist too since 2011. She brings a wealth of experience addressing the mental health needs within public education and the nonprofit sector. In addition to working with youth with significant emotional and behavioral challenges, as well as individuals on the autism spectrum, Ms. Gustafson's experience include developing and implementing behavioral intervention plans, providing therapy and support to individuals, groups, and families, and developing and implementing crisis intervention plans. She earned her Bachelor of Science degree in psychology and her master's degree in counseling with a specialization in marriage and family counseling and school counseling from St. Mary's College um, in California. We are so excited and honored to have Ms. Katrina Katie Gustafson join us um, in Fairfield Sassoon in the position of mental health clinician. Congratulations. <laughs> and finally, by unanimous vote, our board has officially appointed Petty Wentworth as the coordinator of human resources. Ms. Wentworth joins us from Woodland Joint Unified School District where she has served in their human resources department since 2008. She acquired a wealth of knowledge and mastered every position held within the HR department. She started as an administrative secretary, then promoted to personnel analyst and ended her tenure in Woodland as a human resources manager. This was a position that was created specifically for her. Her greatest strengths are her attention to detail, her ability to develop strong relationships, and her ability to learn new things quickly and make them operational. We are so excited to have Ms. Petty Wentworth join Fairfield Sassoon as the coordinator of human resources. Congratulations and welcome. Yay! There was no other action taken in closed session. Thank you, Superintendent Corey. Um, I do have a short opening statement. Um, I would like to thank staff for their continued hard work and dedication. Many folks who had planned to take spring break off continued to work through the week. Staff's frequent and timely updates are very much appreciated by all. I also would like to thank my board colleagues for completing their board self-evaluation. We will be discussing the results at our next meeting in May. Lastly, I encourage our families and the community to persevere with the shelter at home guidelines, wear face masks and practice social distancing whenever it's absolutely necessary to be in public. And with that, we'll move on to uh, recognitions A. I will turn it over to Tim, Tim Gorey who will facilitate the recognition of Tim Stacy, Vehicle Maintenance Manager. Tim? Hey, thank you, President Hemchurch. Um, do we have Tim Stacy on, on the, the 
Oh. Can you hear me, Tim? Yes. yes. There you okay. Are. Okay. Got it working. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Um, now there is a little bit of an echo, Tim. So if you're able to mute, there you go. Perfect. Awesome. And then you'll unmute again when you have the opportunity to speak. It's my pleasure to um, to read a proclamation of appreciation for Tim Stacy, our vehicle maintenance manager, and for uh, an act of uh, courageousness that he exhibited not long ago. And so I'm going to read this. We will get this to you physically uh, in the near future, uh, framed and nice looking so you can put it up on your wall. But here it is. Uh, whereas the governing board of the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District strives to recognize and appreciate those who take selfless and heroic action to protect the safety of others, and whereas the board is aware that on February 25th, 2020, Tim Stacy, the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District's vehicle maintenance manager, observed a, a vehicle fire near the FSUSD transportation facility, immediately directed an employee to call 911, acquired a fire extinguisher, jumped over a fence, and ran swiftly toward danger to help put out the fire retreating only when ammunition explosions from inside the vehicle were heard and emergency services began to arrive. And whereas the board is thankful that Tim Stacy ran toward danger to help others during a situation where most would run away. And whereas the board is grateful for Tim Stacy's inspirational efforts to create a safer and stronger community and whereas the governing board desires to formally acknowledge Tim Stacy for his courageous actions, now therefore the board does hereby proclaim the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District sincere and honest gratitude to Tim Stacy. In witness thereof, they have proclaimed this 23rd day of April 2020 in Fairfield, California. Yay. Thanks for the kind. Thanks for the kind words, Tim. And Marcella, thanks again for the uh, recognition. Um, to me, is really not a big deal. I saw a fire and wanted to help if I could. Um, over the years, I've come across a couple of car fires, and the first instinct naturally is to put it out. But after I went over the truck, there was a number of big explosions that I wasn't expecting. So once I saw that everyone was safe, and I left it to the professionals and went back to work. But uh, this is, uh, you know, after getting on board with FSUSD, I see many people are going above and beyond to help those in need. And, you know, this is just a little thing I could do to help. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. May I make a comment, please? Yeah. Are you the same Tim Stacy with a twin sister named Becky who went to H. Glenn, no, excuse me, who went to E. Bruce Sheldon Elementary School? Yes, Miss Scott. And took my music classes? Yes, we did. It is so nice to see you, Tim, and I'm so you proud too, that you have gotten this award. Thank you so much, Miss Scott. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, B has been uh, removed from the agenda. Do we have, and we'll move on to C. Are there any uh, employee organization reports? It doesn't appear like we have any. Okay, thank you. Uh, Eric Cortez, um, student board member report. Eric, do you have a report? Yes, uh, thank you so much. So uh, I'd like to start by reviewing the process that we've just began for our 2020-2021 student board member. So the applications are now open and they are due on May 8th. Uh, those can be turned in by emailing it to the application to Ms. Witt, myself, and alternate student board member Jordan Jackson. Uh, juniors are encouraged to apply, uh, and sophomores can also apply, but sophomores will only be considered for the alternate position. Um, the Student Advisory Council will be conducting the interviews uh, as they have last year. Those virtual interviews will be held on May 14th so that the student board member and alternate will have been chosen and hopefully will be announced at the May 21st governing board meeting. Furthermore, I wanted to touch on the student board member handbook that I've been working on. As you know, and as I've mentioned at previous meetings, there's not one in place, uh, but I think it would be really helpful for the incoming student board members 
And it would also relieve a lot of uh, questions from current board members and especially uh, Miss Pierce, who has been collaborating uh, with me to complete this, um, who is amazing, by the way. And uh, hopefully this will be a huge help for student board members. And as we continue to collaborate on the project, uh, hopefully it'll be completed by early May, likely even as soon as next week. So uh, that should be obviously presented to you all um, before it's finalized. But yeah, that, that project just keeps getting closer to completion. So I'm very excited. Uh, and with that, I'd like to close my report. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Superintendent report, Superintendent Corey. Thank you, President Honeychurch. Um, I appreciate you acknowledging our hardworking staff. We did have a number of people who had planned on taking fabulous vacations over spring break who uh, instead uh, continued to work and ensure that our kids are getting educated despite our school closures. Um, as soon as we made the official announcement that we were closing school, our school, closing our campuses through the end of the 2019-2020 school year, we started getting uh, questions and emails about when are you reopening? And so what I can tell people is, um, you know, this has been a process, it changes almost daily. We get new uh, information, varying information. And so um, we will reopen when things are safe and we can um, safely accommodate our students and our employees on our campuses. We are looking at um, potentially bringing some more staff back in the upcoming weeks. And our um, assistant superintendent of human resources is negotiating with our CSEA group and our FSUDA group to see how the, um, what the impacts and effects are of these closed campuses. Um, we have so many meetings that are happening, and I just want to reiterate how proud I am of our hardworking staff. And um, just to put things into perspective, uh, we used to meet twice a month for my, with my full cabinet, and those hours were, you know, took up most of a, of a morning, and we are now meeting twice a week. So we went from twice a month to twice a week, and um, there's just a lot of moving parts that are happening in an organization this large. Uh, we're trying to plan, um, as, as, as we've said, we're kind of building the airplane while it's flying. And so we're, we're trying to plan for what currently is happening, what we could potentially provide in the summer, and what um, we have ahead of us in the future. One of the things that I, uh, I've been mentioning numerous times is how amazing our child nutrition services has been. If you watch the news, you see long lines of cars for people who are needing food during this time. And they just continue to serve uh, thousands of meals every day. I think it's around 5,300 meals that they are serving on, on a daily basis. Um, and so our, our employees are working hard, but we've run into a couple of snags. And so one of the things that, uh, that we ran into is that our fresh milk supply, the vendor uh, decided that they were going out of business. And so uh, in order to serve a reimbursable, a reimbursable meal, it had to have milk. And so we had to apply for a waiver and we were able to get a waiver to serve lunches now without milk, uh, but we are conducting a bid process and hopefully we'll have a new milk supplier um, uh, under contract, hopefully by July 1st. Uh, there have been a lot of questions as soon as we closed campus as to what kind of things we're going to continue. One of the things that I just want to make sure everybody knows is we are going to do our very best to honor particularly our high school sen seniors. We have a highest honors ceremony planned coming up in a couple of weeks and we will be conducting that virtually. We don't know quite what the date will be. We have moved it from the original date, but I promise I will keep you all abreast of what that looks like. I know we have a great committee that is working on this to ensure that they get their recognition and they get um, what they deserve because these students are those that have throughout their high school career had uh, maintained a 4.0 or above. So we wanna make sure that we recognize them. There have been a lot of questions also about graduation and what that will look like. And there is a committee that's been put together and we hope to have some answers for 
the board and the community very soon. But again, we are definitely gonna be honoring our high school seniors this year. It probably won't be at the date that we had planned in an auditorium or at a football field, but we will for sure honor our high school seniors. There has been a lot of construction uh, meetings that have been happening. We had a long meeting this week to discuss the future plans at Fairfield High School. Um, we're coming to the end of our bond, as you know, and we had um, Fairfield High School slated to receive a visual and performing arts center or a theater. And there's a lot of discussion that's going into that and what the, what, um, we had hoped might be somewhat cost prohibitive. And so we are including some folks in this discussion and we hope to have something brought to the facilities subcommittee for discussion and consideration. Today we met to discuss the buildings that will be happening at Cleo Gordon, the library and the classroom building. And so lots of exciting things that are going on in the world of construction. And finally, my last bit of um, news, we hope that you all wish Linda Marsh a happy birthday next week. It is her birthday and she's not here with us, but she's here virtually. So I know she's on the call. Happy birthday, Yay! happy early birthday, Linda. <laughs> and that ends my report. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, Linda. Uh, we now move on to F for discussion on the impact of campus closures. Um, do we have any public comment, Superintendent? We have no public comment on this item. Okay. Um, what I will do, uh, board members, is simply go down. Tez, any comments or questions? Uh, no. Thank you. Joan, Scott? Yes, I am very happy to see the continued construction going on because even though I'm sad the campuses are closed, this is a good thing that's coming out of this mess that we've had and with the kids running around in the middle of all of this construction. I'm so pleased to see drive by these places and see them coming to fruition. It's really wonderful. So that to me is the silver lining in all this mess. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David Eisen. I wouldn't just yep. wanted to comment on that. We had a one of our project managers say, hey, I recommend that we do this every year. We're getting so much stuff done. And I said, no, <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> just take advantage of this one time. No, it's great. I'm glad that we did the resolution to, to make sure that that continues to happen. Um, also, a shout out also again to the food services. Um, Dan reached out to some community groups, one of our vendors, and you know, it's, again, another silver lining, one of our vendors actually thought that they would go out of business because of the type of business that they were. But we were able, as the, dis the district was able to score a contract with them, and now he's making more money than he had dreamt he'd make. And as a result, he wanted to do something for the community. He didn't want anyone to know it was him, so we're not saying who it was, but he donated a thousand pizzas easy um, in three faith communities a couple of weeks ago distributed those, we were one of them. So they're doing a great job of making sure our community is fed. And that's always my primary concern because you're not gonna educate kids if they're hungry. So shout out. Okay, thank you, David. It's gotta be a pizza place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Richardson. First and foremost, I want to applaud our superintendent um, for taking the initiative to keep us up to date regarding changes regarding our local health officials and the leadership of our state government and not just hastily making a decision to just make a public statement to say that we're finished for the year. Um, we, we don't know what that always will be. And um, I applaud her for standing strong um, and supporting our staff members as it's essential as her position as the leader of our district um, to portray that image of strength and also to to um, to insert confidence where we're always looking to make sure um, that the best interests of our primary stakeholders are important and that's our students. So that's the first comment. Secondly, um, I cannot say enough about our staff who are making decisions as we speak um, to begin to commemorate 
the graduating class of 2020, um, I believe wholeheartedly uh, that what this class is facing, which is unprecedented, that they will catapult to a new level because of the fact that they had to overcome this first obstacle as they transition from being high school seniors into their first phase of being young adults. And that sets a stage for them to remember when we as a board and a school district were resilient in making sure that we didn't forget who they were, but also remain commitment to their education and encourage them by standing strong with the banner of moving forward with our advancements in technology. So to, to the superintendent, to all of our, our district staff at the main office, um, I commend each of you for your contributions for how you've helped us to seamlessly transition into a virtual district that now will open up a cadre of opportunities for us as we move forward with innovating educational opportunities for all of our students, enhancing our teachers' curriculum opportunities digitally in various ways. I believe that COVID-19 has given us a chance as FSUSD to reboot in a phenomenal way that allows for us to move forward um, that's going to be monumental. So Madam Superintendent and to all of the staff of the district, we commend you for your hard work and your efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. Bethany? Nothing for me, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Craig? Um, I. I, I noticed that the district is getting the word out to the community about what's going on. The buildings are closed, but the schools are not closed. The classrooms are not closed. There's things happening. And I, and I, and I uh, commend, uh, as I see, you know, the public doesn't know what to think. And they think, okay, school's closed. Nothing's happening. Kids are home running around. No, there are, uh, you know, I think, uh, We've, uh, I heard the statistic that we've contacted more than 90% of the students and are engaged in some manner with their teachers and with their peers and their daily contact points. And it's not just worksheets. It's, uh, there's one-to-one -one and small group stuff going on. And uh, I commend the district for getting the word out of what it's like now. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, board members. That, those were all very nice comments and uh, I agree with all of them. Judy, you jumped yes. over. <laughs> Hello, oh. Judy. <laughs> oh, John, I'm so sorry. That's okay. John. <laughs> Thank well, that's, you. That's because you did special laughs, of course. Yes, I did. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I want to agree a little bit with uh, Jonathan Richardson, except that you know, I was thinking before he he he, he talked that how it appears seamless, but I'm sure it was a lot of work and not seamless at all. I'm sure that it, there were a lot of glitches that had to be overcome quickly, techni technologically, and I'm sure we did that. You know, and and it you know it, it looks easy now. I mean, even these virtual meetings, as we all know, aren't that easy, but uh, you know, it works, and we're putting things in place that we can use in the future if we ever need to. And, seem, and then seamlessly go back and forth. But as far as our students go, you know, not much has changed from you know what we discussed last time on, on my end, but uh, some of the silver linings as have been mentioned, uh, um, I hear every day from my customers that uh, they see families doing things together now that they've never seen before. And, and they tell me they are doing things as a family now and they have never done them before. So I hope that these, new bonds that families have formed between the kids and the parents because they're all home now together. Uh, you know, they, they stay that way and they, they become the new normal and people, you know, exercise together and people do things together and they go out uh, in the outdoors together as opposed to just doing virtual things that they used to always do. But uh, so there are some silver linings coming out of this. And of course our big losers and in some way winners, as has been said, you know, our, our kids, um, they've come through this and, you know, they'll, they'll move on. Uh, it's, it's too bad, but it, it, it happens and it, it has happened. It's happening. And it's just one stage of their life and they'll move on to it. And it'll just be a, a story for down the road for all of us. 
But anyway, that's that's all I have to say. Nothing uh, new, just uh, some observations and what I've been being told by my customers. Thanks. Thanks, John. Madam President. Yes. I have a question for the superintendent, if you may, if I may ask. Sure. Sure. Um, I recently heard something happening in one of our neighbor districts, and I just wanted to bring it to our attention just in case we've not done anything regarding it. Um, there have been an increase in burglaries on school campuses um, in some of our neighboring districts due to the fact that those campuses have expensive um, quantities of computers, iPads, whatever. We have a lot of technology in our district. Um, if you don't have an answer for this, you don't have to respond to it right now, but I just wanted to put it out there. I heard some, some people in the community literally today talking about um, hearing about the news of a couple of uh, campuses, not ours in particular, being broken into due to kind of like lack security or the fact that our campuses are not um, as filled as they normally would be at this time of year. Um, so I just wanted to put it out there. If we haven't put any type of contingency plan in place, I think it would be really important to really think about that and whether or not we should consider hiring someone to kind of patrol our campuses uh, during the day um, to prevent that from happening since they're not fully staffed as they normally are. We do have um, people who are maintenance folks that are still working and um, are monitoring our, our school sites. Our administrators also are coming on our campuses quite frequently. And, um, you know, we have a very great security system that we just put in on all of our campuses with additional security cameras that can be monitored from you know a, a phone so we, there is a lot of supervision and a lot and the other thing is all of our technology we deployed it so you know when you talk about um, housing a large number of computers or laptops or ipads or whatever at the school campuses they're not there. They're all in the hands of our students. We got them out and deployed very quickly. And I have heard the same the same thing. I know some um, districts that are just now deploying their devices, that are just now getting laptops and computer or um, Chromebooks and iPads in the hands of their students. And and you know, it's kind of like what Mr. Silva said. It may have seemed so seamless. But there was a lot of time, planning, and energy that went into the distribution of our devices, ensuring everybody had what they needed. And um, I just want to just let everybody know that, yeah, our technology is out there and being used, and our campuses are being monitored and watched, and we do have strong security systems. Good question. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to public communication. This is the opportunity for the public to address items that are not on the board meeting agenda. Public comment is only permitted on matters within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Uh, please, you need to submit a request to speak uh, uh, form and you have three minutes. Do we have any public speakers? We do, we have at the central office this evening, Mr. George Gwynn, Jr. Um, good evening. Um, after the meeting's over, when I get home, um, I'm gonna email uh, you guys some information about the Brown Act um, that's related to uh, TV uh, conferences like we're having tonight. Um, there's some things that uh, you guys should be aware of to be in compliance. Um, for one thing, um, you have to post a copy of the agenda outside your uh, residence or wherever the um, uh, location is that uh, you're transmitting from. Um, it also becomes a uh, meeting place for the public if they want to attend at that point too. So that's um, some of the things you need to be aware of. There's other things that um, I think you'll see when you, you read the uh, particular uh, material. The Brown Act uh, takes precedence over uh, what people um, decide locally and um, also the county and, and state um, if it's the governor because uh, the Brown Act was created by the legislature and it, it was 
people it uh, makes a loss for the state. So I hope you guys will take a look at that and um, make sure you're in compliance. Um, I think you've done a better job so far than some of the other governmental agencies I've seen. Um, other thing too is that it seems that there's a lot of doom and gloom as far as uh, what's going to happen with the economy. Um, it's, um, to the point that I see people being too conservative about um, there being people that are sick. There's always been people that have been sick. I, I think the more important thing um, in the long term is the economy. If the economy goes, um, people are really going to be sick. Um, they're not going to have resources to uh, get in a better health condition. So I, I really hope that uh, you guys will work to make sure that the economy is vibrant too. Um, I think that um, it's a good thing also that um, the um, learning is uh, becoming um, uh, more uh, than just one particular method. We have uh, TV learning, but um, don't be surprised if some people find out that they like homeschool and you have different numbers when they come back than what you had um, before. But the competition is good and it creates a better outcome. So. I think uh, it would be much better than um, just having uh, one entity that's uh, supplying all the information. So I, I think that um, there are things that could be improved from the situation, and I hope um, we get back to um, um, what we had before and even a better situation very soon. Thank you very much. Ms. Honeychurch, I just wanted to clarify for um, the public that the Parts of the Brown Act that were the public speaker mentioned, those are parts that were waived by Governor Newsom. And so we do not need to post the agendas at um, people's homes and they're not seen as a public space. Those were part of the pieces that were waived of the Brown Act. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. We move on to the consent calendar. Are there any items to be pulled from the consent calendar? Yes, please. Okay, which one? I would like to pull 8A for comment, 8E for- a Wait, 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 hold, Joan, hold on just a second. Okay. You said 8A for a comment, okay. 8E for a real short question, and 9 Okay. Um, I promise it won't be long. Okay, so- uh, 8A, a question on 8A. Oh, it's just a comment. Um, a I, comment. Really, I really appreciate Mrs. Witt getting back to me because in the contracts, we had a contract for a photo booth for at the prom. We had a, a contract for a DJ for the prom. We have an assembly for the Science Wish show for one of the schools, and clearly we can't do any of those. So I really appreciated her getting back to me to let me know that those were not are not any longer going to be um, validated. They're going to be canceled. So, and I'm assuming there's some other things that I missed because I went through it pretty quickly, but just, just so that people know those kinds of things are being picked up. Okay, thank you. And 8E, your, your question? Yes, can I ask why the student body accounts are being closed? Off and on we get this, that student body accounts are being closed. What's, what's the reason for that? I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle Henson. Thank you, Superintendent Corey. Yes, as a matter of fact, the bank that that school site was banking with had a change in their fees where it's such that the fees are not um, really conducive to holding an ASB account. Also, they hadn't been very active in the last few years and they are going to be moving those funds over into their donation account where it's um, something they won't be incurring those additional fees with every month. So it's just gonna work out better for them. Thank you, I appreciate that. So is the donation account being held by the district then? Yes. That makes it easier. Okay, thank you. Now I understand why that happens every once in a while. And then finally, do you want me to do 9C? Yes, please. Yes, okay. Um, the question I have is, can we please have a report on the extended day program for the after school band program that's going on? Because I'd like to know how many students were in that program and obviously a whole lot of them still have their instruments at home because I've been told by the various teachers that they let the kids take them home. And then I'd like to know how we're dealing with these numbers because 
there's there's a real oddity going on with how many people they're being that are that they're teaching how many sites they're teaching from and what they're being paid and it's it's not equitable and so i'm concerned about that and having the idea that they're teaching an hour and they're teaching a second hour and that's all we're paying for is not really reasonable when you're looking at the numbers of who has the large numbers on their site of kids that they're teaching and who has one or two so I'd, I'd really like to have the information on that. Thank you. Okay, Superintendent Corey, do you want to re respond not, to that other board well, not member? Now. Not now. I don't expect I don't expect her to have that off her head. My goodness. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, the re the fact of the report is that going to be a, an easy thing to do? Is that something that we need to get the rest of the board agreeing that they would like to take staff time uh, I, to I do this report? Is, I can get it to Mrs. Scott. We've given her that information in the past too, so we can get that to her. Great, thank you. great. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Now, there are, are there any other items to be pulled from the consent calendar? Okay, may I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? So no. moved, John Gott. Okay, is there a second? Second, Bethany. Thank you. Roll call, please. Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Thank you. Okay, that motion carries. We'll move on to action item 11A. A public hearing, adoption of new instructional materials for fall 2020. When I public hearing now open, any public speakers? Public hearing closed. B, review and potential approval of new instructional materials for fall 2020. Uh, do we have any public speakers on this item? We just had the, sorry, strike that. <laughs> I'll turn it over to Jen Roush. All right, hello and good evening, Superintendent Corey, Board President Honeychurch, and members of the board and community. And um, please allow me one moment to share my screen. So um, good evening, this is the proposed adoption of new instructional materials for fall 2020. Each spring educational services brings new instructional programs and materials to the governing board for review and potential approval. Tonight, there is a variety of materials, including the recommendation for history social science materials. This chart is included to review the FSUSD adoption cycle. The district created an adoption cycle timeline based on board identified funds for new instructional materials and in alignment with the California Department of Education's instructional materials timeline. The district is planning to pilot science materials for grades K through 12 in the 2020-21 school year. The materials recommended for adoption for history social science are studies weekly for kindergarten through second grade, TCI Social Studies Alive for grades three through six, TCI History Alive for grades seven through eight, and some remaining high school materials for AP Economics, AP Government, AP Psychology, and Psychology. Additionally, supplemental fully digital resources from Gale Cengage were identified to support the History Social Science Framework and FAIR Act alignment for all of our students. Some additional proposed materials for adoption also include some elective textbooks at the high school level, IB mathematics, and alignment of some current adopted ELA texts to our new courses. And finally, we have Project M3, which is Mentoring Mathematical Minds, recommended as a supplemental math program for KI Jones Gate Program. 
And we have two current adoptions that recently updated their materials. This includes expository reading and writing course, which updated from version 2.0 to 3.0, and Carnegie Learning, which updated their high school math materials uh, to high school math solutions. So we were able to do a public viewing of the instructional materials online this year from March 19th to April 23rd. And the public had the opportunity to request materials, email comments, or submit comments via Google form. And there were no public comments as of 5 p.m. this evening. So at this time, the recommended action is to approve the instructional materials for fall 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Um, I'd also like to uh, say too that these these materials were publicized through social media and the and then they were on the district website. So, are there is there any comment or discussion from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve? Move approval. Jonathan Richardson, is there a second? Second, Bethany. Thank you. Roll call, please. Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. That motion carries. We'll move on to 12A, review and potential approval of resolution 59-1920, designation of applicant agent resolution for non-state agencies. Um, are, is there any public comment on this item? There is no public comment. Okay, I will turn it over to Michelle Henson and give a brief explanation about why this is on our agenda. Michelle. Thank, thank you, President Honeychurch. This resolution permits the designees named to act as agents on behalf of the district. This is the first step in the application process for COVID-19 disaster relief programs that are going to be administered through the Office of Emergency Services. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or questions from the board? Okay, may I have a motion to approve? I, I have a question or I have a statement. Okay. I just wanted to say that I'm very thankful that this money is becoming available and that we can apply for it. Thank you, Joan. All right, may I have a motion to approve? So moved, Joan Gott. Is there a second? Eric Cortez, second. Thank you, roll call please. Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. That motion carries. We'll move on to um, the following items, actually B through H are all bid items. Uh, B is review and potential approval of award of bid 2085-21 surveillance installation to Delco Wireless Incorporated. Um, C is review and potential approval of award bid 20F131 portable relocation at Oak Brook and KI Jones to JB Electric and Construction Incorporated. D Review and potential approval of award of bid 20F132 playground installation at various sites to JP Designs Incorporated and JB Electric and Construction Incorporated. E, review and potential approval of award of bid 20F136 asphalt repairs at Anna Kyle Elementary to American Asphalt Repair and Resurfacing Company Incorporated. F, review and potential approval of award of bid 20F133 asphalt seal and stripe at various sites to Dry Co Construction Incorporated. G, review and potential approval of award of bid 20F137 Fairfield High School 
pool upgrades to Burkett's Pool Plastering Incorporated, and H, review and potential approval of award of RFP 2088-21 Child Nutrition, Fresh Bread to Bimbo Bakeries, USA. Um, is there any comment uh, from the board on any of these bids? Okay, may I have a motion to have move there's approval no, on? There's no public speakers either. Oh, thank you very much. Move approval, Joan Gott. Okay, so B through H, Joan, you're saying move approval? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is there a second? Center. Uh, thank you. Roll call, please. Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Thank you. Motion. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving on to information item 15A, review of the FSUSD teacher induction program preconditions. Is there any public comment on this item? There is no public comment on this item. Thank you. I'll turn, the, turn this over now to Melissa Farrar. Good evening, Board President Honeychurch and Superintendent Corey and Governing Board. The California Commission on Teacher Credentialing as a part of the accreditation process asks induction programs to review the preconditions and have them approved by their governing board. The preconditions are the guidelines all induction programs must follow to be considered for accreditation by the CTC. The documents before you today demonstrate how the FSUSD induction program is in compliance with these guidelines. They are submitted for your review today and will come back for action at the next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, do you have any comments or questions on this item? Hearing none, move on to 16 information item business services. A, review of transportation fee. Do we have any public comments on this item? There are no members of the public wishing to speak. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Michelle Henson. Thank you. Just give me a moment here to pull this up. Good evening, Board President Honeychurch, Superintendent Corey, and Governing Board members. Item 16A on tonight's agenda is in reference to Board Policy 3250, Transportation Fees, which states that staff will provide a review of transportation fees and any proposed fee schedules annually for board approval. In this slide, you can see the district's ridership by category since 2011. Parent pay passes were in effect prior to this 2011 time period, but ridership continued to decline during the recession when the board took action to significantly reduce the number of transportation routes as part of the time. Special education represents the majority of the students that the district's district transports. The parent pay category has remained very consistent over the last few years, under five students out of the total, which is roughly 20% of the students being transported. An important fact and the main reason why we review transportation fees is that the transportation funding no longer exists as a standalone categorical program. What that means is that the district no longer receives funding directly for the purposes of transportation that it once received. Transportation dollars that were received prior to the Great Recession were in a categorical resource and provided more support to the expenses of running a district-wide transportation program. The old categorical transportation dollars were flexed. Districts were allowed to use those dollars to support other programs. And then later, the resource was rolled into the local control funding formula. So essentially, the burden of the growing transportation expenses shifted to the district's unrestricted resources to fund. 
This is where the board was faced with the decision to reduce those transportation rocks. This graph shows that the comparison of the annual expenses to run the district's transportation program compared to the contribution the district makes annually from its unrestricted resources. It is clear that the program, no how, matter how much we try to manage the shortfall, it just does not fund itself and continues to be a challenge for the district. The district's current bus pass fees for parent pay transportation are 566 for round trip and 283 for one way annually. As you saw in the last slide, the district continues to subsidize the district transportation program by transferring unrestricted dollars away from programs such as instruction to the transportation program in an effort to address the shortfall. Now with that said, we realize that price increases are never a welcomed conversation, but given the fact that we have not raised bus passes since 2011, I think it goes without saying we have tried to shelter families from increasing costs as long as possible. What staff is recommending is a gradual increase that would be implemented annually based on the West Region Consumer Price Index. This is an inflation index that is often used to base rental increases, utility increases, and other types of services and products. The West Region CPI is updated monthly. What we propose is a rolling 10-year annual average. Currently, based on the last 10 years annual average, the figure would be about 1.96%. If this were approved, the increase to the round trip pass for a student would be $11.09 per year. We believe this is affordable for families and provides the district an opportunity to recoup funding support for the growing expenses of the program without taking unrestricted dollars from our other core programs. While you consider this, I want to emphasize that this is based on the information we have right now. If approved, this increase would be implemented for the 2020-2021 school year. This assumes transportation would run the same as it did when we started school last year. And we all know that much is being discussed about what school is going to look like given what we've been experiencing in the last two months. The current recommendation also does not take into consideration any additional revenue reductions. If the worst case scenario happens and the state enters into another recession, then I'm afraid this would open a much more difficult conversation that could lead to even deeper cuts into transportation. I'll turn it back over to you for board discussion. Thank you. All right, any comments from my board colleagues? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to uh, adjournment and we will be adjourning the meeting in memory of Leona Iorg, mother of Rona Portalupi, former assistant superintendent of educational services in memory of Jets, Jetsky, Jepsky Farrar, I'm sorry, Jepsky Farrar, longtime employee and important community member from Cleo Gordon Elementary. Thank you again for all of your flexibility and for participating in this virtual meeting. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>